This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, today what we have is a blueprint review. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm pumped. I'm ready. I'm ready to get the show on the road. Um, and this here was submitted from uh, Junior out of Trinidad. So thank you very much for submitting your video, Junior. Um, and anyone else who has videos, you guys have questions, submit them in the video form. Send them to my email, brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com, and we'll get to it. The emails are coming in. Um, a lot of people asking questions. I get tons of emails every single day. I'm telling you, tons every day. Send them in the video. Those are priority. Um, I'm going to try to make sure I answer each one of those in the um, on the show. So if you submit it, you put your effort in. I put my effort in as well. So that's the way it goes. Now, um, let's get right to it. This is Junior from Trinidad. Let's check out his blueprint and his review and let's provide some feedback. Hello, School of Aquaponics. This is Junior from Trinidad. And this is my design for a miniature aquaponics system in my small apartment complex. Right? So... To get started here now, I'm starting with the fish tank. Right? So my fish tank will be at the bottom of my whole system. That will be my lowest point. Now my pump here in my fish tank will be going up straight up. Right? To the top of my first NFT pipe. Right? Then from here now, it will be gravity fed down here through a half inch pipe. Down my 4 inch pipe here, through my half inch pipe, down, and back here now into a media grow bed, which could be a flood and drain system. Right now, I'm using my gravel in this media grow bed as my biological filtration. After that, it will come back now into the aquarium, into the fish tank. Right, my intention is to use 4 inch PVC pipes as my main pipes with 3 inch net cups and half inch connecting each one right I'm, um, I'm planning to use a 550 gallons per hour pump so I appreciate if any advice you could give me on making my system probably a little better or more efficient the intention is to get at least 4 to 500 lettuce plants so I could reap at least 180 to 100 plants per week Right, this wall here is what I'm using. But the system now not going onto the wall. I suspend the system now from under the roof. Right? So I wanna get at least four to five rows across this way, a four down this way. So it could be let me say sixteen pipes in rows are four coming down this way. Right, my um, fish tank will be going here. My grow bed will be going here. So now we've got a chance to check out Junior's blueprint. Uh, we see exactly what he's doing. Thanks once again, Junior, for submitting your blueprint and your video. I appreciate it, and I'm more than uh, happy to help you out. So let's start with a few things. Let me go ahead and check my notes real quick, what I wrote down. Um, so the first thing that I did want to discuss is the filtration. Um, you have the, 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 the pump in there with your fish tank and you have it pumped going straight to the NFT. So this is going to be the first issue that you're going to have. That's a problem. We need to have some form of filtration before, especially coming from where solids are at. We need some type of uh, filtration to, to, to filter out those solids before they get to the roots of the plants. Because in this NFT system, what's going to happen is when it gets to the roots of the plants, it's going to clog or it's going to prevent the uh, roots from taking up oxygen. So they're going to it's just going to adhere to the roots and then it's going to be problematic. Your production is going to be poor. So we have to have some form of filtration uh, in order to prevent that. So this is what I suggest. And also you have the hybrid setup. You know, I'm not a big fan of the hybrid setups. I've done hybrid setups. I'm not a fan of it. It just makes production not as as predictable and it makes it just uh, to, in my opinion and from my experience uh, uh, less uh, productive so I usually separate the systems um, uh, and 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 grow from there so you have your uh, NFT going uh, you have the, the water running through the NFT first and then coming down to the media bed and what you should be doing you need to have if you were to do it this way you need to have what, what I would suggest is you have a sump tank. I know you talked about it in here. You don't have room for a sump tank, but this is an alternative method 
uh, to solve this problem that you would have. Have a sump tank. From there, you have your pump there. Pump the water up. Then I would have your fish tank at the highest level, fish tank at the highest level. Then I would have, as the solids are exiting from the fish tank, then they go into the gravel media bed. That's where they can be processed and they can be um, um, uh, uh, extracted out of the system and prevent it from recirculating. Um, so that's what I would do. And then I would have the other section as, it, as the, um, uh, on the split flow, I would have that go to the NFT section. And then that would not have any solids in there or have very little solids in there. And it would, you wouldn't have this problem here. So that is what I would suggest. If you wanted to keep it how you have it, you have to filter, somehow filter the solids before um, leaving, leaving the fish tank. So you can have like, a, um, um, uh, um, what do they call those filters? Uh, um, um, what the heck are those filters called? Um, a sponge filter. I can't believe I forgot the name of the, the, the filter. You can have a sponge filter um, in front of the pump. And at least um, that would take up those a lot of those solids before it, they got it uh, delivered out. So that's what I would do if you were going to uh, keep that design that way. But an easier design would have your sump tank, and I would split the flow on that type of setup. It would just make it that much easier. And specifically for these hybrid setups, because the NFT doesn't require a lot of flow rate in order for proper production. It doesn't require a lot. But that media bed, you have a flood and drain media bed. The flow rate may be different from the uh, gravity that you have coming down. So it, you may not have a properly siphoning uh, um, a, a siphon. So that may, you may have to do a lot of adjusting, tweaking. So I would just, in order to eliminate all that, I would split the flow and completely separate them if you're going to do it in a hybrid system. That's what I would do. Another thing is the pumps, or not the pumps, the pipe. I don't know what piping you have going to the uh, NFT system, but I know you said you have a half inch coming out. So I'm, that, I mean, I'm assuming that you would have at least a half inch going in. So what I would do is um, you, what, what you want to do in those situations, you don't want to have the same diameter pipe going in as coming out because the gravity is not able to um, carry of that flow, especially if you have full flow going in. If you have half, half inch f uh, full flow going in, half inch coming out is not going to work. I would at least do double the size, at the least double. At least double. So I will at least put a half inch or an inch uh, um, um, outlet coming out, or inch piping coming out, um, and then going back to the rest of your system. That is what I would do from there because you, you're going to have a problem if you increase the flow. So that is, a, that is one thing that I would do also. Um, another thing, the, uh, where you have the system, where you're going to establish the system underneath that roof, you have to make sure that you have proper sun exposure throughout the entire season. So I don't know the positioning of the sun and I don't know the positioning of your um, your system um, in relation to the sun during the different seasons. But if you have if your sun, if the sun is going behind or on top of the roof during whatever uh, uh, the summer, then it's going to be problematic. That means you just cut your production pretty much in half or at least a quarter because you don't have full sun exposure. So I would definitely pay attention to that. Like I said, I don't know the um, where the sun is located at during the different uh, seasons where you're at and in relation to the house, but I would definitely pay attention to that. And also the way you have them, you're thinking about setting them up, how you have them with row here, a row here, row here, row here. That is a lot of, that, that, that's problematic too when it comes to sun exposure because the plants in the back, they're not going to get the full exposure, especially when the front, the plants in the front, when they mature, you have a big head of lettuce, nice, nice cabbage, a nice romaine lettuce, whatever you have in the front, it's going to be blocking the sun in the back. So we have to respect the proper spacage, um, uh, space when it comes to uh, planting them in the vertical uh, type of manner. We have to respect that. So that could be an issue. So I want to warn you uh, about that. So there's something that you can think about, and maybe you, it, it, depending on the sun location, maybe it's something that you maybe want to uh, reconsider. So that's pretty much the feedback I have on it. Um, uh, I like the setup um, for the most part. I like what you're trying to do, the, the nice little U uh, going down, all gravity fed. You know, it's nice. It's nice. Um, it's a nice beginner system, um, and it's something that hopefully it works out for you. Um, however you set it up, man, send me a video whenever you get it done, however you figured it out, and I would love to see it. So um, with that being said, um, that's pretty much it right now. So this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Woo!